Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. It's Monday. It's May 11th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And really, again, I'm trading the 6,000 volume chart today, and I'm really liking this chart. I don't see, I mean, I can't hardly tell any difference between this and the 2,000 tick chart. I think they're very comparable. Don't see any reason why you can't trade this one. I've had a couple of people tell me they like the 700 tick better, but <clears throat> I just think that you're still missing some of the, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the 700 tick chart or the 800 tick chart or whichever one you decide upon. Uh, the data just is a little bit different. You have to interpret the data a little bit different than you did before because you're missing some of the, the way the trades are counted is different. And basically that's what a tick is, is a, a trade, but you can't see the volume inside those ticks anymore like you used to be able to. So the whole idea behind going to the volume chart is we're getting a similar volume as to what we had with a tick chart and you can't really tell the difference in the way they look. So it kind of serves the same purpose. And so for now I'm sticking with the 6,000 tick chart. One other thing I want to answer before I go to the lesson. I get this question over and over about the 21 EMA. That doesn't matter if you're trading a, a one minute chart or an hour chart or a 2000 tick chart or a 500 tick chart or a 6000 volume chart. We always use the 21 EMA. So, you know, uh, don't worry about the EMA. The rules don't change on that. If they had, if I would have already told you something. So just use the 21 EMA. Don't worry about it hope that's clear so um, anyway let's talk about the trades we'll wrap this up pretty quickly uh, it was a little slower today really until right here this was a range day and I was like a range day this is where we broke lower and once it started headed higher you know what you want to do you want to find a measured move lower and you can see right there it was a basically a perfect measured move when it bounced there it did end up going a little bit lower but uh, that was after the market closed. Uh, that was after the reopen. So, and the regular day to day, we closed still within that. Uh, actually, we closed a little bit below it. But if you look, there's also a two tier channel working down there. And if you look at it, you know, prices closed within that channel. So, um, hope that's clear. There is a two tier channel working down. Uh, notice the channel working up, break the new high, and then we started working down. And so, Price action worked really well. This is a volume that worked really well. It looks very similar. There's also short term lines in here. Um, you can see that one. You can see that one. You see the we're moving up, the break, the new high. You're moving down, the break, the new low. Then you're moving up, you get a break, new high. And so they're there just like usual. Uh, everything's working really good, really well. I'm really pleased with this chart. Um, I don't see any re reason why you can't have the same success. And you notice this when you're working down, you get the close outside, a move to a new low. Uh, maybe this last one, but it didn't matter. This is after 2 o'clock. You got the break of this one, and it tried to go higher, and it went lower. But this is after 2 o'clock, so it doesn't even matter. Um, so, but anyway, let's let's talk about the trades. Let me back out just a little more where it's easier to see. Talk about the trades, and uh, not as many today, but still a good trading day. You really, if you saw these first few moves here, you could be done before nine o'clock today, ten o'clock, especially if you caught this one. Be done by ten o'clock, and that's what I like to do. And uh, I noticed that most of your trades were early, and there weren't nearly as many in the afternoon. There weren't but a couple of three trades in that from the afternoon really from after this trade. So from 930 to two o'clock, we had what, three more trades, not a whole lot. So uh, generally when you get these kind of lethargic days, most of your good moves are going to be in the morning. So today was no different, but let's back out. Uh, I've already backed out, but let's talk about the trades. You had a little channel working down. It looks more rangy than anything, but it's definitely moving down. We're making lower highs and lower lows. That's a down. Got a break. First tier. Actually, there's a first tier. One move up. 
double bottom. So your first entry pullback, and there was a second entry right there on a double test of that high, a big bearish bar. I like that setup. I really thought we'd work our way back down. But guess what? It bounces right here. But it was still an easy scalp. And uh, you could treat this, even though you got a scalp out of this, the fact that it didn't continue lower and reversed up here, you can treat that like a failed second entry short and go long right there. And that was a great move. You got to have the presence of mind to be short and then go long. It's very hard, even for somebody that's experienced. So if you didn't see it, it's okay because you're thinking short. And, uh, you know, I've talked about that before, but if you've got the presence of mind to reverse, go ahead and just jump in long there. And then you make a new high, you pull back first entry, pull back, and there's a second entry long right there. Yes, this was, uh, had a slight interruption there, but yeah, this was a second entry long. Notice the new high, pull back first entry, pull back, and it bounces. The first two swings there kind of give you the trend line. This confirmed it. Uh, so this was a bounce right off of it. You enter there. And these are the ones I like to add on. When it pulls back here, um, and this is why you keep your stop below the signal bar. This is Your stop would have gone right below that bar right there. And uh, even though it pulls back, as long as it doesn't go below that, your uh, uptrend's still intact. And uh, and so your, your, your safety stop goes there. And when it pulls back, these are the ones I like to add on add one on uh, right there and then you get two of them out of it quick easy scalp that's all you got out of it and then it kind of sells off um, notice that we made that new high it broke above the overnight uh, high right there and failed it's tempting to go short right there but not right into that trend line because you don't know how far it's going to go this way but when it reverses and turns up here uh, I like going long right above that. Notice the new high pullback first entry, pullback second entry. You're looking for prices to test this high. You might have used the limit order here, but I just put a stop right there. Um, and makes a new high. And then, of course, it does just what you think it's probably going to do is sell off. You couldn't go short here uh, because of all the overlap. It's a little trading range, a little congestion area, but when it gives you the failed second entry long, it goes through the EMA, pulls back and tests it, and gives you a failed second entry long. That's a perfect reversal pattern. I love those trades, and uh, look at it go. And it was quick, easy, and runners, and you know, generally I'll usually exit right a tick or so in front of that. Would have got you out perfectly. And then it reverses. It was tempting to go long here, um, it looks like there's a trend channel there, but it doesn't fit well on the other side. So if you draw it right properly over here, you notice you don't really get a break of it there and it fits real nice but notice what did happen you got an overshoot and sometimes that's if you get an overshoot you don't always get a retest but you probably didn't get a retest here either because it just came off the lows of the range and more people are paying attention to that uh, notice how it did make it a, a new high though before it came back down and once we started going lower here too uh, before I forget to talk about that that would have once you saw that first leg and then once we started going lower for sure over here, you probably would measure from here. Uh, that would have been my target. Notice where it bounced right at that target exactly. It didn't it didn't hold, but it bounced there. Um, so that would have been something to watch for. But anyway, that was a great move down. And you don't have to catch but, but one runner or two like that, in, you know, and you do really well every day. Then we're moving up. It was tempting to enter here, but with no break, it's, you know, and it's a doji, not a very good setup. It is a little ways away from the EMA. If you took it, I'm okay with it. It's it's definitely green and borderline being green, so I, but I'm not going to even mark it. So, and actually this trade is probably more like this one. Uh, you still really don't get a close outside until here and then the move up. 
but you can see that fits a little better. I drew it a little flat there. See how that much better that fits. Um, but you get the break and you pull back another second entry, new high, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. And this is a very similar pattern to this one right here, except you get a better signal bar on my chart on this one. Quick, easy move. And you're looking for prices to come back up here, so that gives you a little more... Um, that gives you a little more incentive to say, hey, this is probably going higher. Not only is this the first close outside this little channel, but we should be, prices should be trying to go up here. So this gives me another opportunity. Then it pulls back, um, goes higher, pulls back again, gives you a second entry long, and you're looking for prices to come up here. Now, on this one, it's not a very good signal bar. Uh, so I definitely would use a limit order, and that would be the only way I'd enter this. And if you did, you probably could have gotten into this one and gotten out with four ticks. Uh, but you need to make sure, you know, you should have drawn that trend line there and been a little bit leery of that. Uh, but it's not a great setup. Uh, you know, the only way I think you can enter this is if you can get a real good limit order. And if you didn't get it filled, you just have to watch it. Uh, and it is a failed second entry long, and it does confirm that trend line. There's actually... Um, a short right there that I failed to circle. Uh, but again, this is one of those where you might have been long and it's real hard to switch gears again. But notice those first two swings. If you draw your line there, this confirmed it. Uh, and, and it looks like a reversal bar. It didn't quite close on its low, but it's a tick within doing so. And again, you would have been looking for it to come down to that measured move down to here. Uh, but that was a nice move. You probably would have exited when it bounced. I would have been real leery about not exiting right here to begin with, even though your measured move was down here. But once we started going lower again, then you could have uh, used that measured move for uh, a minimum target, most likely. So, But we had a little failed break lower right here. You got your double bottom, then you get the failed break lower. Not a very good setup, though. So see if you get a second entry or a second leg counting off the low and then it went lower turned and went right out the upper side i like going long there uh another quick easy scalp i really thought we'd go back to the highs but it didn't it turns down and notice how it's still struggling to get through there and then it tries to go back once tries to go back twice and it's real tempting to go short right here but i didn't like it because of the overlap um it's a bearish for bar. It didn't quite close on its low, but I thought it was better just to sit tight and see what happens. And it tries to go higher and then goes down. Now you got your failed second entry long, another bearish bar, and it's playing off that midline as well. So I like that one. And this one takes all the way off. You could have ridden this one all the way down to the other side. And, and that would have been your target, getting a measured move between these two. I think it's just a little bit lower there. Um, you get a measured move between those two, and if you did that, you get out a tick or so in front of that, and you ride that all the way down. And that was it for today. Not as many entries today, but the price action looks very good. The chart looks very good. This was very typical stuff. Uh, good setups. I don't see many fake outs in here or anything like that. So uh, for a relatively low volatility day this was a good trading day and so i'm really liking the 6,000 volume chart i didn't even look at another chart today early on i was going to open one and i had to jump right into a couple of trades and next thing i know uh think it just looks so good i never opened another one i'll probably open it up in the morning and look at something different but i didn't today and just you know just remember when we get up here around this 2113 to 2114 area um Look how we keep finding resistance, and it always seems to sell off from here. So it didn't surprise me completely that we sold off today once we got back up there again. We just can't seem to, um, you know, consistently move on through that and keep going. We keep, every time we get up there, we sell off. That may continue, or eventually we may get through there and start trending higher again. But my guess is um, when it back, when it, when it corrects enough, people perceive it as a value, but once it gets back up here, people perceive the market is oversold still. There's some pretty stiff selling that comes in, and so it may continue to do this 
Uh, at some point, we're going to go one way or the other. Um, so we just have to see. But if you were to go to a much larger chart, you would probably notice that, hey, we've just been in a big, huge trading range. And, you know, we just keep going up, and then we correct, and we go down, and then we correct and go back up, and then we correct and go back down. And uh, it's all around that 2100 area, and that's typically normal. You, you know, sometimes it doesn't last this long, but, you know, we're making, every time we get above a new century mark now, we're making all-time highs. So it, it makes it a little... Uh, makes it a little harder to continue on I think because it's so such an emotional price level but anyway I'm gonna wrap it up we'll be back again to do it tomorrow hope you had a great trading day this is Mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next time